Hello everybody, my name is Zool and welcome to my guide on how to install and set up Tarry Online Part 2. In today's video, we're going to be following up with the first video. If you missed that, uh, you know, I'm going to link at the top of the description that video. Go ahead and watch that first, catch up, and then we can continue. All right, so in the last video, I left you off saying that I wasn't going to cover port forwarding and static IP. And the reason I didn't do that is because that video is going to get really long and really complicated. I like to keep things focused a little bit better. All right, now before we begin with the actual tutorial, I'm just going to quickly explain what port forwarding is so uh, you kind of have a better understanding of what we're doing. So if you weren't aware, port forwarding is basically when you make an exception for a specific port, a specific slot in your router's firewall for traffic from the internet outside to be able to go through your router's firewall and reach a specific device in your network. What that means for Tamriel Online is basically we are going to make it so that the people trying to join a server can reach across the internet poke through a small hole in your firewall and grab onto the Tamriel Online server inside their network. So today, we're gonna to be talking about how to port forward specifically for Tamriel Online. And in order to do that, we first need to remember our tamrielonline.ini file. This is the file we looked at in the previous episode. As you can see here, we have a port 9933, and we have the connection ID. Uh, and before we can go any further, we need to set up a static IP. Now, depending on what version of Windows you are in, uh, you're going to get to that through a different method. But the way that I know how to do it is to go to my network settings in the control panel. From the control panel, hit on network and internet, then network and sharing, and change adapter settings. You should reach a page that looks something like this. It'll say Ethernet, and it may also have an option for Wi-Fi. Determine which way your computer is connected to the internet. As you can see, I am not connected via the Wi-Fi, but I am connected via the internet. Right click on this and select Properties. Then select Internet Protocol version 4. From there, click Properties. And you should get a menu like this. If it says use the following IP address and it has all this information filled in, then you're good. However, if it says obtain an IP address automatically, that means that you have a dynamic IP address. This is not good. You need to have a static IP address, and I'll show you how to get the information to set one up for yourself. All right, keep, um, keep in mind how to get back to this menu because we are going to need to return to here later. Uh, but before we do that, I'm just going to quickly reset mine to uh, a dynamic IP address and click OK. What we need to do is go to our start menu and type in CMD to bring up the command prompt. From here, you're going to need to type in ipconfig, all one word, space, slash, all. Then hit enter. It's going to give you a very long list of information and we are going to need to find a couple of things. And we're going to need to grab a couple of things. So grab a piece of paper because you're going to need to write something down. Uh, the first thing that you need to find is your subnet mask. Whatever number this is, write that down on a piece of paper. Next up, you need to find your default gateway. This should be listed somewhere as well. Uh, in my case, it's this number right here. I've highlighted it. After that, you're going to need to go ahead and find the DNS servers. In my case, the two DNS servers are right here. Write down both of your DNS servers. If you don't know what your DNS servers, if they're not showing up, you can actually contact your ISP. They will give you that number that's your internet service provider. Uh, you should also, by the way, write down your IP4 address. Once you have all those numbers written down on a piece of paper, come back to the properties of your internet connection, be it Wi-Fi or Ethernet. From there, go back to Internet Protocol 4 and hit Properties. Then check off Use the following IP address. Then simply fill in the information you wrote down. So we're going to start off by typing in our subnet mask. Then type in the default gateway. After that, type in both of your DNS servers. Now that you have all of those numbers typed in, we're gonna focus on the IP address. Look at that IP4 address that you wrote down earlier. From here, you're going to need to type in the beginning three sections of it. In my case, 192.168.1. 
and then we need to fill in the last slot. That last slot is going to essentially be this computer's IP. Uh, that's going to be the static IP that it stays at. You're going to need to select a number. This number must be between 1 and 254. In my case, I'm going to choose 75. So from now on, within this network, we can think of this computer as terminal number 75. That's a simplistic way of saying it. After that, check off the validate settings button and exit out of this menu. From here, launch a website that you are familiar with to make sure that your internet is working. If you run into problems, go back into the IP4 menu and check off the automatically obtain this IP address button and then try following these steps again. If it still doesn't work, you may need to contact someone for help. Okay, so now we have our static IP. The next step is going to be to forward our port to that static IP. Now, before we go any further, I need to warn you, I am not going to be able to go into extreme detail to whatever specific router model you have. Unfortunately, all the router software out there is different, and there is many, many different versions of routers and software and things like that, so there's going to be minor differences. This guide should hopefully provide you with enough general knowledge to do this yourself. However, if you are struggling, feel free to leave a comment down below, I'll try to help you, or better yet, click on the link in the description of this video and message me on my Discord server. Uh, I'm much more responsive there and just the interface and the way that the chat works makes it much faster for me to help you, especially since I can hop in voice chat. and Things will just be much faster. I've helped a bunch of people that way. So do that if you're struggling, but this is just going to be a general guide. The first thing you need to do is figure out which brand your router is. Uh, to do this, you need physical access to your router. So for example, if you have a Linksys router, you click on the L on this page on portforward.com, which we're going to be using because it covers all the different router brands. And we will click on Linksys. From there, you need to figure out the model number of your router. Uh, I'm just going to pick an arbitrary one here, but you'll need to physically check on your router. Uh, I'm going to pretend that mine is a WRT350N, and I'm going to click on that. From here, you'll get some basic instructions on how to set up your IT, IP. Now, we'll recommend using this network utility software. However, I have not had great results with this, so I would recommend avoiding it. It seems to not work super well. Uh, so we're going to stick with this method. Now, uh, step one is to set up a static IP address. We have already taken care of that. Step two is going to tell you to log into your router by typing in a number. Uh, for this router, it's 192.168.1.1. Some routers have different logins. So again, look at whatever your router says on the screen right now. Open up another tab and navigate along to that uh, location. From here, you will need your router's username and password. If you don't know it, it's probably listed on your router. Uh, I know a lot of them physically have a sticker on them with the username and password, uh, but barring that, uh, there will be a default password listed here, um, and the uh, portforward.com website will cover the default login information. If you don't have access to this password, if you don't own the router, if it's your parents' router, you're out of luck because you need that to continue on. Log into your router and you will be presented with some form of interface. From here, you're really gonna have to follow the portforward.com's guide. As you can see with this specific Linksys router, you have to navigate along to a specific area called port forwarding, uh, and there's di different pictures showing you how to get to that page. With my router, I need to click on firewall, and then I need to click on port forwarding, and it will give me this page right here, where I will then have to enter the IP address, or I can select it from a list of the different devices in my home. Uh, as we recall from earlier, 192.168.1.75 is the computer that we want to target the port forward to. After that, we are going to need to figure out the start and end ports, in my case, of where we are trying to port forward the port. Uh, that port, Fortunately, if any of this confused you, you can actually go over here uh, and there should be a drop-down menu of a bunch of different uh, applications um, and you can just select one of them. It's not going to have Tamriel Online here, unfortunately, but I found that if you select uh, pretty much anything, in this case we're going to select Minecraft, and then type in the IP address that you're targeting, in our case 75, it will show you the information that you need to type in. Now, Minecraft has an external port and an internal port of 25565. 
What we need to do for our purposes is to move it over to the 9933 port that was listed in the Tamriel Online INI file. Uh, so in my case, what I'm going to do is type in the information appropriately. So I've just gone ahead and quickly switched from that random uh, server to my specific router. And again, it'll show you here, there is different options that we need. In my case, I have to do two separate port forwards, one on TCP, one on UDP, and we're gonna do it for the 9933 ports. Okay, so as you can see here on the screen, I have forwarded both of those ports to uh, the 75 PC where we're gonna be hosting Tamriel Online, and I have selected port 9933, which is the port from our tamrielonline.ini file. Uh, before we go any further, I guess I should confirm to you that this is actually working properly. Uh, and I'm going to use the network utility software. Now I know earlier in the video I said not to use this because it costs money, and that's true. If you want to actually use it to set a static IP or forward a port, it costs I think like $40 or something ridiculous like that. However, the port checker tool is available for free. Uh, there's other ways to check the ports, but I found that this is the most reliable way of doing things because sometimes those websites give me false positives. So if I click on the port checker tool here, uh, and then I just kind of bring it a little bit more centered, I'm going to type in port 9933 and hit check me. And boom, there we go. We can tell that our port is open. And if I do UDP, I've already done this already, but I know for a fact that this is also going to work. And yeah, so our port is open, everything is good to go. So if you're having trouble with Tamriel Online, hopefully this has helped. Now, if you'd like to see me cover things such as a Hamachi connection install method or perhaps some performance tips, leave a comment down below. I do plan on continuing my showcasing and tutorials and stuff on Tamriel Online, and I realize at this point not everybody's going to be there. However, unlike the last video, I don't want to make a definitive promise because that made people fairly angry. So I'm going to end it here saying that you should probably expect a showcase in the future and possibly if there's enough feedback in the comments, a guide on how to improve your performance. And with that, I'm going to end today's video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. If you're wondering what to watch next, I have provided two videos for you. You can click them right here. Get subscribed by clicking on that circle icon and subscribing to my channel. And please follow myself and Shoelace on the social medias that you see above. Thank you. Have an excellent day.